the commercial mortgage-backed security market is freezing up and credit default swaps are going parabolic. What is this a sign of and what is happening? That's what we're going to be digging into in today's stream. So commercial property market freezes, sending bond volume plummeting. Sales of commercial mortgage bonds have fallen off a cliff, plummeting about 85% year over year as rising interest rates cut into lending volume and default spook investors. Now, this was released February 17, 2023, but it's so important to understand that all the failures that we've had after this point, such as Credit Suisse, Silicon Valley Bank, and all the other banks in the US that have got into trouble have happened just after this happened, okay? So putting two and two together, you can kind of see where my thoughts are going with that, rightly or wrongly on this. But about 4.27 billion of the bonds have been issued so far this year, down from 29 billion last year, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. So that's really interesting. So the amount of bonds being issued is down. Adding pressure is a recent string of defaults in the office and retail property sectors, making bond buyers even more wary. And we were just talking about Blackstone, and I didn't know, but Brookfield has also defaulted. So this isn't a good sign. It really isn't to have this happening. And you've got to think, the commercial mortgage-backed security market is absolutely massive, and the commercial real estate market is absolutely massive as well. And what is going on right now? Money is getting tighter. There's a liquidity crunch that is happening right now. People don't want to lend out to other counterparties because they're worried about the risk of them not paying them back. So things are getting very, very interesting right now in different markets, despite what the stock market is doing. And that will be in denial for a period of time until it's not. And then it crashes. So let's continue reading here. So adding pressures is a recent string of defaults in the retail and property sectors, making bond buyers even more wary. This week, Bloomberg reported that Brookfield Court, parent of the largest office landlord in downtown Los Angeles, defaulted on loans tied to two buildings instead of refinancing the debt as demand for space falls. Now, this is really interesting because, and I'm going to get Orlando on to chat more about this because he has much more expertise in this field. But what is really, really interesting is I didn't know this until I spoke to him, but a lot of the, with a lot of these commercial mortgage-backed securities, they can just walk away. There's no penalties and they can just walk away. So just imagine the risk that is in that space. And if you remember when mortgage-backed securities and all that was going wrong, there were these things called credit default swaps. In fact, that was what Michael Burry was buying. He was buying lots of credit default swaps on different tranches of the mortgage-backed securities. Now, not to get really technical, but essentially that is just an insurance policy that if that CMBS blows up, essentially you get a big payout for that and the the payouts can be absolutely massive and bankrupt insurance companies even and banks who issue these things so very very interesting so a loan tied to former president donald trump's tower at 40 street wall street in manhattan was placed on a lender watch list and investors are trying to foreclose on one of the country's largest malls, the Palisade Center in Weston Yak, New York. Probably butchered that word. So you can see that all this is kind of crumbling right now. And, you know, Canada's involved. All these other countries are involved in Europe right now. And as we see, you only have to drive around your city to realize that so much space is vacant. I mean, where I am in Calgary, I think, is the, the has the highest vacancy rate in North America, if I'm not mistaken, not just Canada. It's absolutely huge. And if you've ever been up the Calgary Tower, you'll see just how much office space has just been sat empty. And the thing is, guys, this hasn't just been a case, at least in Calgary, since the pandemic. It's been a case since 2016, 2017. So you've got to ask, like, there is something big that's going on. And was this what the yield curve was also warning about in 2019? And then obviously the pandemic happened and the can kicking and everything like that. It's an interesting note to think about. 
So default risk has increased and could be more problematic if rates increase and the economy slows. So rates have increased and the economy is slowing. So it is going to become problematic. I totally agree with that. And the thing is, these markets are just so big. There's just a mass of derivatives that are out there, quadrillions. I mean, the mind boggles just trying to compute these numbers in your head. You just can't even think about the amount. So there is a ton of risk out there. And right now, money is getting tight. And I'm just going to show you this because it kind of sums it up what's happening right now. So if we go over to here. So credit default swaps the cost to ensure bonds against Charles Schwab are surging right now. That was an hour ago. So what's really interesting about that is you've got to think. Now, I'm not saying that Charles Schwab, Schwab is going to go under or anything like that. That's a broker, by the way, in case you didn't know. But what I am saying is that the market is starting to get really wary and suspicious about some of these companies and the insurance that goes on those companies' bonds is going up in price. And that means people are trying to hedge against the possibility of those defaulting. And the ones that are going to be more likely to default, you're going to say, see these credit default swaps go up in value even more. So the question then has to become, what happens if one of them does default? Well, the thing is, whoever issues the credit default swap, which could be a bank, could be an insurance company, they then have to pay out. And if enough of them happen at the same time, you guess what happens. You have a financial crisis. You have a systematic failure in the monetary system. So there is big problems going on right now. No shadow of a doubt. There is massive problems that are going on right now. And we see that. And then this chart basically shows you how CMBS issuance has vanished. And it goes all the way back to 2016. And you can see the only year was 2017 when it was this low and it's lower than that. So it's kind of insane. And what is really obvious to me is that there was a massive issuance of CMBS in 2022. So it's going to be very, very interesting what happens this year because there is a lot of commercial mortgage-backed securities that are rolling over this year. And if people can't pay them, if companies can't pay them and they can just walk away with no penalty or just pay even a small penalty, they're going to do it, aren't they? Versus refinancing at current interest rates. So there is massive risk there because at the end of the day, that mortgage would have been issued by a bank. How, how many of these banks are tied to the issuance of the commercial mortgage-backed securities? And all of this starts to get very, very complex, but you can realize that there's a lot of money invested into this market. And we haven't even talked about the disaster and the train wreck, which is real estate investment trusts. And the other thing is we've got to keep thinking along the lines of how many pension funds are in fact invested in all this garbage? Because the fact is the pension funds, they got pushed out so much on that risk curve in 2021 because of the artificially low interest rates that they were investing in like very, very, risky products because they just wanted a yield and real estate investment trusts commercial mortgage-backed securities all this kind of all these kind of products were perfect for them because they were providing a yield and a high rate of return compared to other markets at the time because the gut the government via the central banks was stepping in essentially buying their own debt or buying debt via the commercial uh, via the um the central bank, sorry. So, you know, you're, you you get all of this and that's only happening in a circle so that they can print the money into existence to fund their ridiculous spending. But it's just kind of mad when you really think about it. I think it's absolutely insane. So there really is a big, big problem that's going on right now. And we're only just starting to see what is coming out of the woodwork. And Brookfield, I did not know that they defaulted. I would have included them in the video that I just posted that was about Blackstone if I had known. But I've been saying for quite a while on and off camera about Brookfield that they could be a company that's at risk because they are holding the bag on a ton of commercial real estate which is essentially sat empty. And they're one of the biggest Oxford properties. And there's a bunch of other ones out there as well. Blackstone, BlackRock, all the pension funds are involved in this game as well. 
could this be the black swan event that we're going to see later this year so anyway if you've enjoyed this video you might like either of these videos here thank you so much for watching and i will see